she was not, never wrong. It was just a decision or a choice to learn from. I would tell her that to love yourself before before anyone or anything, because that's um, that will just when you learn to love yourself. The the amount of love you can give out is just like infinite, and just and to be brave. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Communion Podcast, where we have free flow conversations with friends about their lives, their past, present, and what's in store for our future. We discuss overcoming obstacles, spiritual experiences, next chapters, life's profound moments in a warm communion with a friend. Together, we dive deep into the journey of personal growth and collective healing by healing ourselves and sharing those journeys. I'm your host, Lee Papa. Join us. In part two with Maria Hosmer, Maria continues sharing her life experience with her horse Atlas. She shares her inner revelations of learning to like and love herself, and we exchange ideas on life and spirituality, karma and reincarnation, and Maria gives advice to her younger self. Stay with us. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. But he got ill. Yes. He He got ill, and he almost died last year that's over all oh, that's yeah yeah so it was a christmas miracle yes it was and it's interesting when you look at things like that and and there was a moment where i turned to my husband that morning and i just was like i i can't lose him i can't lose that the lifestyle that i created for myself because it it just it was motivating for me every day to get up and do this stuff and i just i just can't lose him and every time i go see him um and I wasn't going to be selfish, of course, if, if the vets had said there was nothing they could do or if it looked like he was suffering. Or I, yeah, very intuitive when it comes to that kind of thing. And if he had given me any kind of indication that he was ready to, to move on, I would have I would have done that for him, of course. Uh, but I remember both seeing him, and every time I saw him, his there was this life, and life in his eyes. And yeah, I wasn't feeling all that great, but every time he saw me, he'd light up. And, and I'm like, no, not, not yet. I you will. spoke life into him. Yeah. So he, he recovered. Again, surprisingly, they're just, okay, I don't know how this is happening, but here he is. And yeah, it just, it's just something that just brings me such great joy to be able to get up, just go and see him in the mornings and just sort of do my thing with him at quiet time. And it's like a quiet, it's like a walking meditation. I mean, I, you know, I'm not a, med- I don't meditate. I'm just, I can't sit, my mo- monkey mind too much. But I, when I'm with him, I do, you have to be present. You can't be thinking about dinner or what happened yesterday or day before. What, you have to be present because if you're not in the right spot, you could get hurt. <laughs> so you have to be really present. Yeah. And that's what he's helped me with too, is to be in the moment. So you're not thinking about too many other things and enjoying the moment. I think it's one of the things that I tend to, mm-hmm. tended to do in the past was even when I was in a moment that I would find enjoyable or something. I was always thinking about something else and like, okay, when I'm done doing this, I got to go run off and do this thing. And it, then I thought about it, it really wasn't that enjoyable because I wasn't really present. So he's taught me that. And that's been a great lesson for me is to, is to be present. Um, Just being present with him. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it sounds so simple, but if you think about, if you just think about all the things we tend to think about when we're doing any number of the things that we do every day do we ever really concentrate on that one thing just thinking right. about oh, there's some other, something else you have to do so and the world is moving so fast that just trying to keep up with your day i mean i've all i was already a multitasker back in the day not so much you know through my own healing process but when I was, it's exhausting. And um, when you do start healing, you look back at the younger version of yourself with a lot of compassion and empathy because it is exhausting being in the existence when you have not looked within. Yeah. When everything is is outward. Great conversations. Thank you. <laughs> like our Sunday mornings. <laughs> Croissants and espressos. So there are a couple things that um, that I'd like to address One of the things is um, yesterday, actually, you sent me a a little short. It was a a video short, 38 seconds, and it was of Jonathan Rumi 
being who is the actor who portrays Jesus in the hit TV series, yep. hit, uh, yeah, a streaming series uh, called The Chosen. And if you haven't seen The Chosen, please go watch The Chosen. It is a very modern and extremely well done documentation of Jesus's life with um, backstory and you know layering on to make it a very modern and very well acted series. There are uh, four seasons that are out now. You can access them on Amazon, uh, Netflix, uh, the Chosen app. There are all kinds of things. Anywho, getting back to the short, he's being interviewed and such a, an amazing guy by this gal. And she asked this question, if you were having a cup of coffee with Jesus, <laughs> what would be the one question that you would ask him? And Jonathan says, um, I hope I get this right. How did I do? Sure. Did I get close? And in 38 seconds, you realize, and, and I loved when you sent it to me, you described it because you said, wait for it, because there's going to be the answer. And then there's going to be the answer. Oh, I just got chills. <laughs> and so I think I'm going to find it again and put it in the description box, Perfect. the link, because it's so good. His answer was, you know, how did I do? And did I get close? Like tears, right? All right. Because you realize he was not talking about playing Jesus. He was talking about his life. Yeah. And so I know this is a tough question and we didn't talk about these questions before <laughs> we got on here, but, um, if you want to kind of just add anything to that or speak to that, maybe even add what you would ask Jesus if you had an espresso and a croissant with Jesus. Um, I'm going to get a little emotional here. Yeah, I, but that's it. It's so great. How did I do? That is something that I try every morning to give an answer to. What I mean by that is, at the end of the day, I like to be able to put my head on the pillow and say, I did best I could today and I will do better tomorrow. So I would probably ask him the exact same question. How did I do? And I would I would love to hear him say that I got it right. Hmm. Or at least I got it mostly right. How did I do? Yeah, I like to ask that question to myself when I'm interacting with people, when I'm I like to try to think about like, am I doing the best I can in this moment. You also come up with such great con contemplative questions. And I think that's why we really, I love our conversations. One of the things that you came up with is that you say to yourself, if I could ask myself, right? Actually, I'm gonna let you ask that question because yeah, you so, know what question well, I'm talking it, about. Yeah, it was, it, it's interesting. And this is where my brain goes. I mean, every day I just kind of, these little thoughts are just popping in my head. And I, I always think to myself, if I were to meet myself, what would I think about myself or would I like me? Great, great question. You know, would I like me? And I guess I could answer that in a bunch of different questions or anybody could, because I guess it depends on your perspective and what your, what your moral center is and all of that stuff. But I think in general, if I were to meet me, what would I think about me? Like, I would like to be able to say to that me person that I'm seeing, oh, she's kind. She's compassionate. She's generous. She's funny. She's passionate about what, you know, animals or her convictions or whatever that is. She's flawed. That's okay. Because we're all flawed in some way. But I would like to be able to say that I would be friends with that with me. I want to be friends with me. And if I can't say that, if I can't, if I wouldn't be able to say that, I would say, okay, well then I have to start looking at myself. Oh, am I compassionate? Am I kind am i all these things and it's not an ego thing it's just that's the attributes that i want to project out into the world not project because it's out of, of falseness or mask that i'm putting out to the world mm -hmm. to see oh i'm kind i'm generous all these things that's who i want to be hmm. that's who i want to be and i think i'm doing a good job so far i hope to continue to do, to do that if i was sitting across from jesus and asking that question i would and he would tell me and say, you know, if you got it, did a good job. I want to hear that. I want to make sure that yeah, really tried. <laughs> so good. Darn it. Um, 
we're very hard on ourselves. Yeah. And, and if you had asked me this question even three years ago, four years ago, I may have given you a different answer. I don't know if I would be friends with me, to be honest with you. Well, hey, why don't be friends with me now? I love me. <laughs> oh, my God. We can end it right there. That's awesome. <laughs> I love you, too. Um I think the, the question, love the question, and, and I and might just add that to everybody that I interview, because as soon as we had that discussion, I was you know, digging in, you know, and asking myself the same question. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, agreed, the same is there were, there would be times in my life where I, I didn't like me, didn't, mm -hmm. in retrospect, while I was in it, I didn't know it. But in the evolution of our healing, we can look back on our lives. That's why self-observation, there's a great book. I highly recommend it to everybody. Another great book, Self-Observation by Red Hawk. And all the, my book re uh, recommendations are in my link tree, by the way. So you can go to the description box and go to the link tree and find the Amazon storefront. But self-observation is imperative to our emotional, mental, spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. No doubt. And we should be teaching this to young ones. Absolutely. I've been doing that at least with my son and he's a young adult and and um, I'm like the things that you are aware of now at this age is fantastic. I didn't get there until I was 50, right? <laughs> and so I love the self-reflection and the what if questions. So the what if questions that we always kick around and the idea of would I be friends with me? Do I like me? They're always like little shadow areas. But if we don't have the shadow areas, then we don't have a place of growth. So to be okay with the shadow areas as well, I always use this visualization of the cartoon uh Peanuts, the Peanuts characters, and Pigpen. Do you remember Pigpen where there's like this dust all around him? Or I think about that as all the shadow areas of the places that we need to heal. And that contrast of those places to heal, we can't just squirrel those away and pretend that they don't exist because then we don't get to the place of healing them. Yeah. And growing. So there's my little two cents. Yeah. That was a whole dollar's worth. We're talking about two cents. I think. So how do you navigate the world of contrast now? Because we are living in a significant world of contrast. And I know that there's there are a lot of people that are suffering, a lot of people struggling, a lot of resistance out in the world. You can feel it. It's visceral. And sometimes you'll get a wave of it where you're like, where did that heaviness come from? I wasn't feeling sad. I wasn't feeling anxious. And all of a sudden you feel it. We're yeah. becoming more and more uh, feeling beings, empathic beings. Uh, and, you know, we're in the United States here. It's, uh, you know, 2024. We have an election coming up. There's a lot of scuttlebutt around all of that. And you can either lean into duality, right, and lean into the contrast and and speak what I would call death into something by moving into fear, or you can be the mindful observer and speak life into the existence that you want to create. But that can be very challenging when you're navigating this yeah. 3D world, right? So how do you do it? So that's a loaded question. Um, I guess it just depends on, first of all, it depends on my mood of the day, not the it just, well, you know, we all have our moods. No, but yeah. generally what, what I tend to do is I like to try to be the, just the observer. I look at what's going on out there and I like to say, well, you know, is, is this what I'm seeing? Again, is this something from fear or is this something from love? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's a whole lot of fear out there right now. So, and so I try try to just sort of observe it, be aware and mindful of what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, this this viewpoint, that viewpoint. I have my own, my own personal viewpoints and things. But 
I just tried just honestly, it's just a lot of time, it's a lot of prayer and little self and self reflection about what is the kind of world that I want to see. It's not like I'm, 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 I'm in denial of the things that are happening, but I do say to myself, okay, I could, I could dive into all of this and be part of the quote unquote problem, or I can live by example and just continue to be kind, continue to be service to others. Speak what, when I, when I am guided to speak and share an opinion or share a thought provoking question or something that somebody can think about. But for the most part, I just kind of stay in my lane, so to speak, mm-hmm. and we'll just kind of put out as much positivity and love as I can. I, I you said something on um, the question, something about, you know, speaking death into something. I refuse to do that. Mm-hmm. I just refuse to do that. It's like, I want to see a world the way I would like to see it, which is what a passion and acceptance, uh, non-judgment, all these wonderful things and I want to see in the world, it starts with me. It's not out there. What I'm seeing out there is being projected out there, but this is where the projectors, you know, this is where the movies is being created, being projected out into the world. So if what I'm seeing out there is not jiving with how I feel that day. What can I do? What little thing can I do to change the movie? What can I do to, you know, change right. that character? Let's get that character out of there. You know, and I don't mean it in like that they're not um, the person itself. You know, like get rid of that part. That's not what I'm saying is I can speak life into that as opposed to just saying all these things are so bad. It's like, well, okay, there's there's a lot of different opinions out there now, but let's just try to meet in the middle and try to compromise and be, be loving and, and listening to each other. If there's more of that. Everybody wants to talk over each other and make their points and everybody's right. Everybody's right. If I don't mean right or left, that whole thing, but that's not what I'm talking right. about. Everybody thinks they are correct. <laughs> so, and that's okay. They are entitled to whatever they want to feel. I just like to try to keep an open mind and keep my head down, give out that love, but I know it's there. I'm mindful that it's there, but I don't try not to get involved in all of the, um, negativity or anything i just don't want to to spread that energy out of more fear of more yeah you're not leaning in can't i can't do that yeah. it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, it's not comfortable in, in my body first of all it doesn't feel good in my body but it's also not helping situations either mm-hmm. when they're so that's just not being helpful just think living by example is probably the best way that i can i can maneuver through this this time right now it's and just, finding joy in the simplest of things. Simplest of things, and and just yeah. Listen, I I have the least that I've ever had in my life, and I'm the happiest. I mean, I was just supposed to say this to you the other day. It's like I, you know, I get up in the morning. Like my day's pretty, so you know, I get up and I have my breakfast, and we have our little chats, and I go to the barn and I spend time with my horse and talk to the people over there. And I have a good time and. You know, I come back and I'm sweaty and throw through the bar, take a shower. And it's just every day I just try to just enjoy those little moments. And and when those big, quote unquote, big things come up, I do take a look at them. But I just don't let it rattle my day. I just can't. I just can't do it. I won't allow it anymore because I used to. I'd be going to sleep at night still thinking about that thing that I heard about a week ago or something. I just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You just uh, sparked something that I want to share, and I have it on my Facebook page, I think, or one of the socials. The the meme is, according to society, luxury is cars, expensive clothes, lavish lifestyle. The real luxuries in life are slow mornings, freedom to choose, a good night's sleep. You just talked about that. Peace of mind, calm and boring days, being present, people you love people who love you back and, and i'm like i'd love to add one more one one to that yeah. is be in a state of gratitude be yes grateful. it's like it's easy to to go around saying about all these awful things that are happening but if we all just sit and just think about what could be great even the small thing that we can be grateful for that thing well yeah. those things those gratitude. things yeah. being being present Having the luxury to, and when I take the, you know, the dogs out to go do their business, 
It is one of the things that I am so grateful to be able to be here and be present with these animals or at the dog park and to be able to have community with people that show up at the dog park because they know that that other person's going to show up yeah, and that there's a supportive union there. These are simple treasures, but they are luxury. So I would, if I died today, I would say I led a luxurious life because I was able to experience all of those things. And they are all blessings. Some people call them blessings. Some people call them, you know, nice to haves or whatever. But we can choose. We can choose fear in our life. We can choose uh, love in our life. We can choose not leaning in. We can choose unification. We can choose peace in our heart. And only when we reach a place of that personal journey of finding peace within will we experience the peace without on the outside. Right. And it's interesting. It's like uh, here we're seeing, I will see things on social media, books, you know, I have books everywhere of just, you know, different spiritual paths and just all these different things. And it sounds so cliche sometimes, you know, when you hear those, that, but that's all, all you have to do is to live a life of gratitude and you know, self love and, and some inner peace and whatever. It sounds like it's like, oh, it's like just something you say. Okay. Just try it. You know, try it. just how many hours in a day? I mean, take five minutes, 10 minutes to just sit and just be present, be grateful. And those things that you hear about, <clears throat> they start to manifest in your life. And I think you're only going to, appreciate those words or appreciate that those ideas unless you experience back in the day again before my before my 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 journey i would hear people you know positive thinking or affirmations and all like manifesting and all this stuff i'm like yeah whatever you know it sounds really good right. I, it's just just not gonna happen in my lifetime and it doesn't have to take life changing or like altering type of situation for us to do that we can do that at any give any given moment unfortunately i chose to learn it in a different different way some of us need to run into a brick wall subtlety is lost on me so <laughs> sometimes you kind of have to do that so okay. it may sound silly and it may sound easy and sure you can say that because you know you're whatever you're you're living a great life uh, but my life's not and then again it's not about being a victim there's no such thing as victims um and that's another discussion and, and people will probably disagree with me with that and that's okay Again, you can feel however you want to feel. Um, but it's like hearing all that stuff and actually giving it a try. Just try it. You know, mm -hmm. just, you know they're not just words. There are actually, a, you can experience that if you, if you really want to. Because I, I know plenty of people who, who just, who don't. And that's okay too. Yeah. You know? They'll get to it when they get to it. Exactly. Everybody, everybody's where they're, where they're meant to be at that moment exactly the, at exactly the right time and here's a great place to say take what resonates and leave the rest yes. right because it could be a seed for later and i typically say that because you know you can't not everybody is going to reach everybody at the same point in time case uh, case in point would be a course in miracles sure. so a course in miracles was introduced to me way back in i don't know i think 2010 2011 when I had the center, the wellness center. I did not resonate with it at all. Like the, it was just complete resistance and probably some judgment around it. And then I was introduced to it again, probably from you, from you and Jamie. Again, didn't resonate at all. It didn't resonate until I was ready for it. And then it was through another book. It was through the disappearance of the universe. Again, that's on the on the book list. So we get to where the, our next steps, where we're meant to be. I think our job is to just be in a space of awareness so that we can see the breadcrumb. Yeah. The next one, the next one, the next one. And you'll hear me say this a thousand times. I've said it to you a thousand times which is, you know, we're all in a process of evolving. And the the worst thing is to just stay stagnant in your belief because then 
you atrophy and there's no growth. And when there's no growth, you know, you might as well call it a day because this is all about healing and growth and expansion and knowledge and wisdom and all of that. That's the journey. So I guess here's the question. What do you think the per the purpose of this life is? For me or for just in general? In general. Purpose of this life. Honestly, for me, I think it's just experience. It's just mm -hmm. it's just a journey that we take and we we take all the things that come our way and we again looking at it through whether it's through love or through fear. And it's just to experience all that life has. All of it. The good, the bad, the ugly. All of it. What we do with it is our own, is our, is our choice. That's where free will comes in. Just, you can look at it in any way and it's not, and none of it's wrong. You can look at it however way you want. No one's wrong. It's just the way that you're looking. I would never be arrogant enough to say that the way we're looking at the same thing. And because you're not thinking about it the same way that I am, you're wrong. And you have every right to feel the way you do. Mm -hmm. It's not my business to change anyone's. I can only change mine. Um, so just living life and just experiencing all of it because there's something to be learned in everything and absolutely everything. So do you believe in an afterlife? I absolutely do. And do you believe in reincarnation? I absolutely do. And do you believe in karma? Yes. And I don't know. Actually, no one's ever asked me that one before. So karma in, there's a twofold in there. Yeah. So Karma to me is every action has a reaction okay. and, and it's an energetic thing. So there has to be, you know, we're living in a duality experience. So there has to be another side to it. So if you go in and steal a car, you're going to receive that back in some form. May not be that your car gets stolen, but something else will happen that will be a reflection of that same energy. That can also be from lifetime to lifetime. You led a life where you were a taker. You're going to experience the other side of that being um, being taken. I believe that karma is is playing out fast and furious in this lifetime. Maybe you don't even have a thought about it. We've never talked about karma. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I mean, that gets brought up a lot. People will say, you know, and. I'm going to keep this as clean as possible, but, you know, uh, karma is a... Yeah. 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 A she's, got a, she's, got a, she's got a long memory. Um, honestly, I used to I used to think about that, but I will say that I think of it a little bit differently. So I do agree with the whole, okay, uh, you get to feel what the other person's feeling or the action and, and the consequence that that has and all that. I kind of get that. But as far as, like, I don't... Because when I hear about karma, it almost feels like punishment. It almost feels like mm -hmm. that. Does my this is my own personal mm -hmm. thing. So yeah. I think the creator saying, and again, I, I don't believe that this comes from the creator either. This is just something that we uh, paradigm that we've kind of made up. Is that if you do this this thing, then you're going to have something bad happen to you, or something like that. So I don't, as far as that kind of way of thinking about karma, I I'm not convinced that that's the way that works. I think that it's a choice to learn both both parts. I think it's kind of fun. I, this, is, this is where my brain goes. It's kind of fun. If you think about it, you're like, okay, I'm judging this person for, crazy, you know, doing something that I think is wrong, right? So if, in my brain, I'm like, well, what if that was me doing that? Thing? So it just, it's not karma. I don't see karma as a necessarily punishment, but more of a realization or an experience so that you get to experience both sides. I like that about the experience. Art. I, I believe it's a universal law that every action has a reaction. Sure. I mean, I think I think that's science is science. It is science, but it is science. But with what you're saying, I think that, yes, I believe that we're here for experience and we're here yeah. for all experience. And one lifetime you want to experience this, the next yeah. lifetime you're going to experience something else. Or the uh, opposite of that. The because opposite of that, you too. right. And I think we've all been all things. Like, so yes. to be prejudice, I think, is a ridiculous waste of time because we've all been everything. So you're just judging yourself. Absolutely. Uh, if you believe and that, the thing, that's exactly what we're doing. Well, right. If you believe that we're all one from one energy, then we're just, any kind of judgment is just a reflection of coming back to you. 
Right. I mean, I could go, you know, we could do this forever and ever and we probably will. But as we're wrapping up, I like to ask people because I think the generation that is coming up that are becoming, you know, adults or young adults now, because that's my son's age, mm-hmm. I'd like to support them in a way of gaining the wisdom and the knowledge of our experience of how long we've lived in our healing work and our journey. What piece of advice or wisdom would you give the young adults now reflecting on your life and your healing and what you've come to know and glean as wisdom? What would you like them to know? Oh, I know it's a big question. Okay. Um, Or you could even say, what would you tell your younger self? My younger self. If you had to do it all over again, what, you know so that you don't waste time. Right. That would, to my younger self. I would probably tell my younger self, first of all, to, to not take herself too seriously. I would probably tell her that she that she was not, never wrong. It was just a decision or a choice to learn from. I would tell her that to love yourself before, before anyone or anything, because that's um, that will just... You learn to love yourself. The the amount of love you can give out is just like infinite. And just and to be brave, to be brave, to speak your mind, to be who Creator meant for you to be. Be brave. I wish someone would have told me that. Thank you, my dear. I love you so very much. Thank you for being brave.